Hello everybody, this is Sudeep Manchanda from Quite Easily Done. This video is a part of this series called Know Your Components and the component that we would be talking about today is called Resistor. What we would be covering in this video is understanding what a resistor is, calculating the resistance values of these resistor, what are the errors that are, can be there in the resistance values. We would be having an introduction about Ohm's law. We would see how resistors can be connected into parallel and series and different types of resistors including light dependence resistor or LDR. So let's get started. The word resistor, but as it implies, uh, it, it, is, it is something which provides resistance to the flow of current in an electronic circuit or an electrical circuit. Now, resistors is something that is the, one of the most commonly used electronic device in any circuit. And you, you might be able to see them in your circuit diagrams as something as like this or sometimes as more of a block like this and then either it says r or oops either either it either it says symbol like r or it says 10 and then a symbol like this which is ohms so you might have seen these things very commonly in electronic circuits and if you are right now starting up with electronics you would be wondering what these mean and how do they work so this is the symbol represents, as I said, is a resistor, and a resistor is something which provides resistance to the flow of uh, current in a circuit. So let's first start with understanding the flow of current, what it means. Now in a circuit, you would have also seen a symbol like this, which refers to a battery or a power source, a DC power source. It has two terminals, and this is, by the way, a symbolic representation of, let's say, your pencil cells or your 9-volt batteries or uh, car batteries, anything for that matter, any source of power, if you chargeable batteries or alkaline batteries, it makes no difference. So um, it has two terminals, as you might have observed, one is the positive and the other is a negative terminal. The longer one is always a positive, the smaller one is a negative one. Now when we say a terminal is negative, uh, what it means is it is one which has surplus amount of uh, electrons in it. What are electrons? Re electrons are negatively charged particles. Um, and the other terminal that we see in the battery, the positive one, is, is one which has deficiency of electrons into it. So it, it's, there is no, uh, and when we, when we now connect this um, battery source to a load, and in this case, when we see a load, we mean a resistor. Uh, a load can be a resistor, can be a motor, or can be any other item for that matter. What would happen is, now because you can see a wire connecting between the two, the excessive electrons in the negative terminal would start flowing from the negative terminal down here and then up here back to the positive one because you see there is one place which has excessive electrons, the other one has a scarcity of electrons and in order to kind of neutralize things, it, the electrons would start flowing in this direction. So this is the flow of electrons, uh, but the flow of current is opposite to that of a flow of electrons. So the current actually flows in the opposite direction from a positive to negative. That is how it's called. Now this flow of electrons in from negative to positive, or we might call the flow of current from positive to negative, is what a resistor would provide resistance to. Let's say we don't have this resistor, we kind of connect the wire directly, so it's like a short circuit. Um, the electrons from the negative terminal would move in full speed to the positive terminal and it would the speed that these guys usually have is close to 2200 kilometers per second, which is very fast. It and this movement generates heat. and the, basically the, the amount of current that would flow because of such high flow of and such high speed flow of electrons would uh, might even damage your battery so in order to resist this flow we put in a resistor this resistor would slow down this flow of current um, 
and bring it to a state where it is safe for your electronic items let's say for example uh, let me remove this. let's say you had uh, an LED over here okay that's not a neat symbol but um, you had an LED over here if let's say we would not have had this resistor over here the current a huge amount of current would have flown through the resistor uh, to the LED and that would have burnt it out a resistor is something that reduces this flow of current and kind of saves your LED from being burnt out that's the function of an LED oh uh, sorry the function of a resistor so the resistor the amount of res so an equivalent example of it can be let's say you have uh, a pipe right and water flows through the pipe if you don't have anything in this pipe it kind of flows in really really quick the pipe being very straight it, the, the flow of water would be very fast with no resistance at all but let's say you add in let's say you add in a valve in here somewhere right this valve would depending on how uh, open is it or how close is it the flow would be restricted a bit the resistance acts similarly for the case of water so resistance the the amount of resistance that a resistor is providing to the electronic circuit is calculated in uh, terms of ohms with this symbol like this and the higher the numeric value of ohms is the higher the resistance it provides the current so if you go down we could see this is a very common resist resistor like uh, this the resistance the resistor when you see in an electronic circuit you can see they are usually of a four band five band or a six band the bands are these colored strips that you see into it and the color strips is nothing but a convention by which you can understand what is the value of resistance in the ohm value of it so let's take an example of a four band resistor for example you see there are four bands here and then there is a third band for now the these bands over here we will be ignoring that for a while okay um, what we would start on with would be these bands over here which represents the value of resistance there are these lookup tables uh, and each of these color represents a numeric value it might be difficult at first to try and remember these that black represents zero or brown represents one what we used to do during our school times we had a, a way to remember it we used to say b b roy good boy very good wife so that's kind of the first characters of all the colors together so it just helps you to jot it down on a piece of paper very quickly just in case you don't remember those so it's 0 1 2 3 4 5 till 9 is the numbers assigned to each of the color you see in a four band resistor the first three bands that we see here are the ones which define the value of resistance the first one is brown so we put in a 1 uh, the second value is a black which is a 0 in a four band resistor the third value represents a multiplier which means 10 to the power in this case it's an orange so it's 3 so this is a 10 into 10 to the power 3 ohm resistor which we say is a 10 kilo ohm resistor okay similarly um, you can see you would be able to find examples of a 5 band resistor in a 5 band resistor the resistance values is provided by the three bands the leftmost three bands uh, so let's take take this example where we have the first band as a yellow which is 4 the second band is violet which is 7 the third band is the uh, the third band is the uh, is green which is 5 and then we have is the fourth band which gives us the multiplier which is 2 a red uh, so you get is 47500 zero zero ohms which can be said as 47.5 kilo ohms so you mean you've seen an example of a four band resistor a five band resistor and similarly a six band resistor for finding the value of, uh, of resistance of a six band resistor it works exactly the same as five band there is just one additional band which talks of temperature coefficient 
so let's do that also uh, this in the six band example the first band is red which represents two the second is violet which represents a seven then we have is blue which represents a six and then we have the multiplier band as black which is 10 into the power 0 which is black is 0 so 10 to uh, anything to the power 0 is 1 so it comes out to be 276 ohms that is the value that you have seen here so that is how looking at a resistor you can tell the amount of resistance that it gives its ohm value what it means we would be understanding what this number mean exactly we would understand that when we come to ohms law now you see um, in the four band there is and the fifth five band resistor there is this additional band um, the, the example of resistor that we are seeing is a fixed resistor which means it is, if, if I am picking a resistor whose value I calculated as 10 kilo ohms that is the amount of resistance it will always provide to a resistance to a particular uh, to the flow of current in the circuit similarly 47.5 kilo ohms is the resistance that this second resistor would always provide but these values are not always accurate there are a couple of factors which might uh, influence them so uh, the the last in, in the four uh, band resistor the fourth band and in the case of a five band resistor the fifth band is what represents the tolerance the tolerance is basically what is the amount of error that can be there into the value of resistance so in the first example I we see that it's a gold which looks more of a yellow but um, you would see that actually in exact circuits also you might get confused between yellow and gold but because knowing the position of the band you would be able to say it's a yellow or it's a gold because uh, the tolerance band would be considered as gold so in, in a gold resistance the tolerance is plus minus five percent which means depending on different situations the resistance value of this uh, resistance would differ only by a five percent it might go maximum plus five percent or a maximum of a minus five percent similarly in the second case of a five band resistance we look at the tolerance uh, band being a brown which is one plus minus one percent the five the six band resistance the fifth band is again tolerance in this case again being a gold which gives a plus minus uh, of uh, five percent now uh, tolerance is, gives you the amount of error that uh, can be there in a resistance value it's spe one specific type of error is caused because of the changes in temperature you might be at a 25 degree centigrade or you might be operating at a 45 degree centigrade the resistance value might change because of that and that value um, uh, in, in, uh, of change of resistance with this change of temperature is calculated by temperature coefficient so temperature coefficient is, uh, is basically the accuracy in the value of resistance that would be there with the change in temperature and these are calculated in terms of ppm which means parts per million so 100 ppm basically means uh, the change of resistance would be 100 parts per million we'll, uh, we'll understand that example also in detail so uh, okay so when I said uh, a 20 ppm for example this means 20 by uh, a million is the amount of ohm value changes that would happen per degree centigrade of changes so which actually comes out to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 ohm per degree centigrade that is what the temperature coefficient the last band represents in a six band resistance so in this case we see a brown which means the resistor has a hundred uh, ppm of temperature coefficient so hundred ppm would become a hundred here so that's the amount of ohm value changes that would happen per degree centigrade which is very very less so basically you would look at this coefficient only and only under the cases where you are working on circuits which is very 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 sensitive very critical similarly you would probably not you will most probably ignore to uh, tolerance also in most of the cases all we are interested is in the digit values and the multiplier whenever we are looking at the resistance now the same value of resistance as we have calculated over here can also be measured using a multimeter 
and we would look at that in the multimeter right now. So okay, what we have here is a multimeter, uh, one of the most common models, if we have to talk of cheaper ones, not the industrial level expensive bench multimeters. So this is one which has, you see a dial in, uh, in the center and has voltages over here and you see resistances modes over here. So you, you rotate the dial to come to a particular mode that you want to be in. So all the modes over here refer to the resistance modes. Before we start using it, let's switch it off for now. Before we start using it, we have to ensure that the negative, uh, the black one wire is connected to the common or the ground, whatever the symbol is shown on your multimeter. The red one has to be ensured is connected to something which looks like this, a V or an ohm symbol or a milliampere or something. Uh, we ensure that it is not by mistake connected to anything which says amperage or current or something uh, which is this in my multimeter uh, if you try to use this while trying to measure resistance or voltage uh, you're doing a big mistake so once connected we have the two terminals over here which can be uh, connected to a resistor like this now what I would try to show you things but because I'm holding things in my hand Remember, uh, it kind of gives in an error because of the resistance offered to the current by my body itself. So we'll not see amazingly good, nice values over there. So what we need to ensure first is um, so when, when when we look at this multimeter, you see um, in the in the ohm or the resistance stage. It starts with 200 and goes to 2000, then has a 20K, 200K, 2000K. This is just to give a representation of what is the range of values of resistance that you can use these modes to measure. So when you, when I am on, on, a, on a mode like 200, I'm measuring something with very low resistances. Uh, one 20K is like I'm measuring a resistances of one kilo ohm or 10 kilo ohm type resistor. Uh, and we can go up higher if you want to. Don't worry about choosing the wrong mode because in case you select uh, a, a wrong mode which is not in the right in the range of it, let's say I use a 200 mode and try and measure a resistor with resistance of 10k, I will get a number one written in front of it, uh, which will show me that it's going out of the range of doing it. So what I'm and when you when you select up the mode in it and you connect the resistor in between the two terminals like this i'm holding it you would be able to see the values you see in this case this is actually a 10 kilo ohm resistor uh, but it's showing it something like between 11 and 12 because i'm holding them in my hand uh, so the value is kind of not coming in correct. How did I know it's 10 kilo ohms? You saw the numbers were between uh, 11 and 12, um, but my mode says 20k. So the number that I see over there, I have to add a k in front of it. So if I saw a number 10, I, it would be a 10 kilo ohm resistor. But if the same thing when I was on the 2000 mode, and if I see a number 10, it would probably mean uh, a 10 ohm resistance. Okay, so that's how the modes are selected, and that's how a multimeter is used to measure the value of resistance. Always remember that once you are connecting these two terminals to, to measure the value of resistance of a resistor, if, a, if it is, it should be out of the circuit. It should be something like this. Uh, because when you're doing that, then you're measuring the resistance of the resistor. Otherwise, you might end up measuring the resistance of the entire circuit. So if this was a part of a circuit and I connected uh, the two terminals of it, assuming that I'm me measuring the resistance of the resistor, I might be wrong because there might be other circuits around it. And as we saw, as we will be seeing the, the resistance when they're connected in, with different components in series or in parallel, the value of resistance changes. So be careful with that. Okay, so now that we have looked at what a resistor is, we have looked at calculating the resistance value and measuring it using a multimeter. We've also talked about the resistance value. 
uh, errors that can be there in it. We will now move on to the next topic which is the Ohm's law. The Ohm's law is a very fundamental law in electronics. Very commonly talked about and very simple to understand also. We will be doing a very quick introduction about it right now. So Ohm's law basically states that in, an, in, in any electronic circuit, the current I that flows into it is directly proportional to the voltage that is applied in it. So if it's a 9 volt battery, that's the voltage that we are applying into it. And it's ir the current is irreversibly proportional to the amount of resistance that is there in the circuit. So if the resistance value, the ohm value that we measured, uh, if that is more, it reduces the amount of current. So for rise in the resistance, the current reduces. Um, and similarly, for the increase in the voltage, the amount of current would increase. So that's what it means in Ohm's law. Uh, let's take uh, a very quick example. Let's say we had a voltage source which had a 5 volt resistor, uh, sorry, which had a 5 volt power source to it and there is a resistor which is connected to it which has a 5 ohm resistance to it. Now what is the amount of current I that would flow into the circuit would be defined by voltage divided by resistance, the voltage being 5 volts and the resistor being 5 ohms, so which gives a current of 1 ampere. So the Ohm's law becomes important uh, because as we took the example in the other case, if let's say I, uh, I have an LED that I uh, attached to this and the current that would flow through the LED would also be 1 ampere, that is what you have calculated. Now let's say the specifications of the LED says that the LED can bear only a maximum of 0.5 amperes of current. What will we have to do in that case? We will have to change the value of resistance to 10 ohms because when we do that a voltage uh, the current is voltage divided by resistor which became, becomes 5 by 10 which gives us a value of a 0.5 ampere which is what we want. So uh, the ohms law basically helps us in understanding what is the amount of resistance that we should add to a given circuit. Uh, to be able to have a, the current that we want which is safe for our current uh, for the so the uh, uh, items that we have added into the circuit. Now what would happen in a lot of cases is in this case we came up with a nice good value of 10 ohms but we might come up with a value of resistance which is not a standard uh, resistor which is available in the market let's say for example 10.25 ohm or something. Now that's not a standard resistor that you would find in the market. What, what are we going to do in that case or uh, for that matter you, it might be a standard resistor into the market like 470 ohms but I might not have it with me right now what 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 in that case so we in, in such case we would be using multiple resistors and attaching them in either a parallel configuration or a series configuration so let's have a look at that now. When we say we add multiple resistors into a series configuration, this the left diagram is what we are looking at. So this is the series. Series mean you have one resistor and then the second one and then let's say the third one connected back to back. Now this can be two or more resistances. So the first resistor R1 is connected and then this R, the R2 resistor is connected right next to it in the straight line. So the current flows across all of them in one flow. So in, in such cases the net resistance in the circuit is the sum of each of the resistors in this case R1 plus R2 plus R3. So the amount of resistance that is offered in this circuit would be the 1 kilo ohm plus 2 kilo ohm plus 6 kilo ohm which brings us to a 9 kilo ohm of resistance in the circuit. Now by the Ohm's law we know that the current that would flow in in this case would be V by R. Now we seeing that the voltage applied across is 9 volts. So 9 divided by 9 kilo ohms uh, is the current that we would get is 10 to the power minus 3 ampere. Now the very basic fundamental of uh, electronics is because we have applied a 9 volt across the net total over here irrespective of what we do that will be true always. So by applying the Ohm's law on individual resistance we can kind of verify that also. We said that the voltage across each res uh, uh, across a resistor would be IR, it's just 
um, restructuring the equation. In this case, we know that the current is 10 into the power minus 3 if the first resistor R1 is 1 kilo ohm, that is 1 into 10 to the power 3, which gives a, a voltage of 1 volt. The second resistor, which in which again we would have V is equal to IR, I being 10 to the power minus 3, and the resistance being 2 kilo ohms, that is 2 into 10 to the power 3, we get a 2 volt of voltage drop across the second one. The third one is again V is equal to IR, for which we have 10 to the power minus 3 into 6 into 10 to the power 3, which gives us a 6 volt. So, if we look at the entire thing, we have 1 volt drop coming in after the first resistor, a 2 volt additional drop coming in after the second resistor and 6 volt additional drop coming in at the end of the third resistor. So, cumulative is a 1 plus 2 plus 6 that is a 9 volt drop. That verifies the fact that our calculated resistance of 9 kilo ohm is correct and Ohm's law is also correct. Okay, So, that is one way of looking at it which was the series in which you can add. So, if I was trying to get a 12 ohm resistance, I can probably add a 10 ohm resistor with a 2 ohm resistor, whatever I have in my kit available. Okay. Moving on to the next possible thing is we can add the resistances into parallel. So, the diagram on your right is what a parallel configuration looks like. So, in this case, I have added uh, two resistances R1 and R2 in parallel to each other and by uh, we know uh, that the amount of net resistance in this case would be 1 upon R, R being the total net resistance would be equal to 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 and this can go on if we keep adding multiple resistance. If I add a R3 over here that is I will have to add a R plus R3 over here. So, uh, that is what uh, it comes out to be the net resistance. So, if we solve for R we would get the value of the net resistance. In this case, if we solve it, which is if I say 1 by R is equal to 1 by 22k plus 1 upon 47k, the value of R comes out to be approximately 14.9855, which is nearly equal to 15 ohms, just approximating it. What we looked over in the case of a series was the current I was flowing across all resistors. So, that is the same current that was flowing through the entire thing. Now, if R is the net resistance to the circuit, in this case the current I which is V by R would come out to be 12 by 15 kilo ohms. Sorry, this is supposed to be kilo. Okay. So, which comes out to be 0 0.8 into 10 to the power minus 3 ampere approximately. This is the current across, so this is the resistance for which the, the block for which we calculated the resistance. So, the amount of current is this is, is over here. This is what we have calculated. This current 0 0.8 into 10 to the power minus 3 over here, it goes and splits into two parts. So, it, this current is not the current through R1 or R2, it is the current through, through the, across the terminal A and around terminal B. Now, the, the current would split into uh, the ratio uh, which is opposite. Uh, so, because the 47 kilo ohm resistance would be providing a higher resistance, the current would have uh, a high, the higher amount of current would flow to try and flow through R1. And uh, R2 uh, providing a higher resistance, lower amount of current would flow through R1. So, and so if the ratio of resistance is 22 is to 47, uh, uh, the amount of current ratio will be 47 is to 22. So, uh, if this is like uh, 69 total, let's say 69 ampere current is flowing through, 47 would flow through R1 and 22 amps would flow through R2. That is also again how you would kind of come up with very uh, with the value of net resistance that you want or be able to divide current into different uh, of your electronic circuits as per what is required. So, what we have now looked at is a parallel connection of resistances. So, we have looked at both the series and the parallel. Uh, 
uh, you can have a hybrid combination of things also in which you are adding uh, resistances as a combination of both parallel and series configurations let me just very quickly draw one uh, example of it for you let's say i add a resistor r1 and a resistor r2 into series and let's have two such configurations where i have another circuit in which r3 and r4 are the resistors added in series so we know in in this case the resistance is r1 plus r2 here it is r3 plus r4 i might connect these two sets into parallel so, so this is hybrid individually we have two resistances which are in series but then the these two combinations are in parallel to each other so the net resistance in this case would be 1 upon r1 plus r2 plus 1 upon r3 plus r4 so any such combination is possible and you might see, end up seeing a lot of these into your circuits so that is how the ohms law works and resistance in series and parallel would behave now the, the amount the types of resistance that resistors that we see uh, vary a lot in the real world and that is our last topic for the video we see uh, we, we would be able to see um, the single inline resistors in market uh, so this is a one single package in which you have multiple resistors connected to it the single uh, uh, so this is one terminal and then multiple resistances connected over here so uh, you would have resistance value between zero, 1 and 2 terminal 1 and 3 terminal and so on as is shown over here in this di diagram you might have a 4s type also in which the 1 and 2 have resistance in between 3 and 4 have resistance in between so basically an sil or a single inline resistor is one in which has um, multiple resistance in the same casing we also so these are all where we have been talking about uh, cases where the resistance is fixed the resistance value is fixed we also have cases where the resistance value can be varying now the resistance like the most common example that you might have seen is that of a rheostat a rheostat is this device over here which is huge and is used in labs usually we don't use it in practical electronic circuits what happens in that case is you have a terminal over here and then you have wire which goes around like this winding up around uh, as a coil and ends up into a let's say a terminal c here and you have a slider up over here which has a pointer which is in contact with this coil and the wire this 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 contact this uh, thing is connected to another terminal which is terminal b so what practically would happen is um, if i connect this to a particular circuit the current would flow here would flow all the way around and then exit out of terminal c it starts from terminal a goes all the way around and comes to a terminal c let's say this uh, the amount of resistance which is provided by this entire wire is a 10 kilo ohm resistance now when we have this slider which connects to one section of the wire and then uh, leads it out through terminal c so what would happen is if i connect something in between terminal a and terminal b let's say again an led then the amount of resistance in this particular circuit you will have to have a voltage source also uh, let me add that oops i've added two leds but um so uh, what would happen is the amount of resistance being offered in this circuit that we have done is just by the amount of wire from ter between terminal a and where the slider is in contact with the uh, with the wire if I slide this further away, now instead of the original, this section of the wire which was offering resistance, the newer, if I move it here, the higher amount of wire would be pro providing resistance. So, uh, by sliding the slider, I am able to change the resistance in the circuit. So, that is a variable resistor. 
so if I want a lesser resistance, I would move it towards the terminal A. If I want higher resistance, I will move it to closer to terminal B. So that is what would happen. Um, a smaller version of it is what we usually see in circuits. So this is one just a uh, uh, representation of it. So we see such uh, components in our electronic circuits on PCBs where you have one terminal this in the upper in what we were looking above was terminal A uh, this is your terminal uh, C and this is your terminal B so again the current would flow through the entire disk and come out of terminal C the terminal B is connected to this slider over here so if I move this thing over on towards terminal A the resistance reduces and if I am moving it towards terminal C the resistance would increase. So I am able to provide a uh, variable resistance uh, in, in my circuit. So this is uh, what we would be using a lot in a lot of cases uh, in the circuits that we would be coming up with. So this is the, the variable resistance in this case was one where the resistance was being changed on the basis of R actions. We also have is an LDR which is a light dependent resistor which is this over here in which the value of resistance changes on the basis of the light intensity which is falling on the sensor which is this section of it. So if the light, light uh, increases the resistance value in this case reduces and when the light uh, reduces the resistance increases. So this is the concept that we very frequently would be using uh, to design our circuits. Let's say for example a circuit where uh, we want the when when the outside light when the sun sets and the light intensity outside is low switch on our, our LED bulbs or something. So that is what we would be using to identify uh, is the what is the light intensity because the value of resistance would kind of tell us what the uh, uh, light in intensity is. So that is one again uh, a type of light uh, uh, variable resistor where we are not manually changing the value of resistance but it is dependent on some additional uh, parameters. Um, another way to classify uh, resistors is uh, the we have is this one on the left is the through hole resistors. Uh, which when we add to a, a, a PCB circuit or something we create a hole and through the hole we would put in these uh, ends of the resistor. The other one is called a surface mounted resistor or an SMD in which look like these which are put on top of the copper area of the PCB uh, and uh, it's sh shouldered over there. Uh, no drilling of holes is required in that case. So this is very common in uh, industrial level things where because these are very compact. The SMDs are very compact and uh, takes very less space on the PCB. So for a given circuit you might have a very small PCB which can fit in in small places. So in industrial level a lot of things you would find SMDs being used. But in a lot of cases when you would be creating our circuits on breadboards or creating our circuits at home, we would be using the through hole resistance because that is uh, easier and convenient for us to use. So that is all about the resistance and resistors that I had to share about uh, with you guys. Please let me know if you guys have any questions or comments or feedback for me. I would really love to hear from you um, and uh, I would be there to answer your questions if you have any. Thanks a lot.